Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in this course, Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustion, Module 2, Entropy and Exergy. Till this point of time, we have covered the entropy analysis with four lectures. Now, in the next two lectures, we will discuss about exergy analysis. Now, we are in the module 2, lecture number 5, exergy analysis part 1. So, in this lecture, so this will be lecture number 5 and in this lecture, we will be discussing about the concepts of exergy, exergy of a system and closed system exergy balance. So, let us uh, discuss something on the concept of exergy. Till this point of time, we all know from the first law of thermodynamics that energy is a conserved property and it is conserved for every device and processes. But uh, the energy alo analysis alone is inadequate for depicting many important aspects of resource utilization. So, in some sense, it may happen that energy may have certain potential or not. For example, in the second law, we discussed that work is considered to be high grade energy, heat is considered to be low grade energy and they and there is in a sense that there is a relative potential exists between the quality of the energy. So, the analysis of exergy gives us the idea whether proper utilization of energy is done or not. So, what we can say that although the energy is a conserved property and, co and is a constant quantity, but with lapse of time the potential of its uses uh, decreases or degrades, which means that its economic value drops. So, it can be interpreted that uh, uh, greater uh, initial potential of the system is largely, largely destroyed due to the irreversibility nature of the process. So, means that energy degrades with time and it degrades due to the irreversible nature of the process. So, to have another understanding that uh, uh, the quantification of energy, we represent another term and in fact, we are, this is a also a thermodynamic property which is known as exergy. So, this exergy quantifies the potential use of energy. So, it must be remembered that exergy is not a conserved quantity, but whereas energy is always conserved. And this exergy is destroyed by the irreversibility associated with the systems. So, with the time we instead of calculating energy, we must calculate exergy. So, this will tell you whether there is a, uh, a work potential exist for that nature of energy. So, the objective of exergy analysis is to identify the sites where exergy destruction or losses can occur and we can assign a rank order in, in their significance. For example, we can we may have many situations like 10 kilojoule of work available and we also can have 10 kilojoule of heat is available at 20 degree centigrade or it may be 300 degree centigrade or it may be 1000 degree centigrade. So, what is the relative ranking between all these sources of energy? So, this can be possible through the exergy analysis. So, the exergy analysis provides a definite link between the economic value and the energy of the system. So, in our discussions, the attention is centered for the aspects of system operations that offers greatest opportunities 
for a cost effective impro improvements. Now to uh, analyze the concept of energy let us uh, refer to this particular figure. So, what we have seen here in this figure that we have a body which is at initially at temperature T i and we want to extract the work potential or we want to quantify its work potential. So, for that purpose uh, it must reject heat to the atmospheres. So, in the body which is at initial temperature T i and whereas, we have this atmosphere and typically we call this as surroundings it is maintained at temperature T naught and P naught. So, uh, what uh, it can be what we can say about this that in order to uh, extract work potential from this body that means, this work potential needs to be evaluated with respect to atmospheric conditions or atmospheric parameters. So, uh, we can to do that we can think about a power cycle that can run in between. So, it takes so that means, as if we are evaluating this uh, um, the, the Carnot cycle uh, which operates between the initial temperature T i and atmospheric temperature T naught and um, we are getting the work output from this power cycle. So, as long as T i is greater than T 0 the we can get the work output for from the systems. But if the in a reverse situation if T i is less than t, t 0 our directions of heat should be reversed that means, there will be requirement of work input into the system. So, uh, and such a particular concept can be visualized that as if we have a closed system this closed systems interacts the with environment or in this case we call this as a surroundings in the mode of heat or work transfer. And this system and surroundings in this case body and the atmosphere it consists uh, it constitutes the combined systems or that combined system analysis uh, this what we uh, do in the exergy analysis. Now, in the process of maximizing the theoretical output of work we interpret this energy as exergy. Now, we will talk about the important aspects of exergy. In fact, there are 5 important aspects of exergy. So, we will discuss them one by one. The first one is that exergy is a, is a extensive thermodynamic property and it is a measure of departure of the state of the systems from that environment. So, that means, when you do exergy analysis we must take system and the surroundings or environment together. So, it is always referred as attribute of the system and surrounding together. Exergy cannot be negative. So, it is because that system would always proceeds towards the dead state. I will talk about the what do you mean by dead state in the subsequent class uh, subsequent slides. So, it means that a system is would always proceed towards the dead states spontaneously for which maximum work cannot be negative. For example, a, a candle light keeps on burning as long as it is having a um, it is it is getting its power source. So, in a uh, otherwise with time this uh, the its work potential goes on reducing or in terms of producing the light. So, in a so what we can say is that it is a spontaneous process and since it is a spontaneous process this uh, the exergy cannot be negative. Already I have emphasized that exergy is a non conjured properties, but it is destroyed by the irreversibilities associated with the systems. The, but the potential of uh, uh, potential to develop work that existed originally would be completely wasted in a such a spontaneous process. That is what I said that exergy cannot be negative. An alternative way of uh, representing exergy is that that exergy can be regarded as the magnitude of minimum theoretical uh, work input required to bring the systems from the dead state to the given states. So, 
So, in, a in our previous analysis, we say that system is going from any arbitrary states to a dead state. That means, dead state means with the uh, surrounding conditions, means temperature, means properties matches to the surrounding temperatures or it is in equilibrium with the surroundings or environment. So, that is what we call as a dead state. Now, when the system is at dead state, it means that it is in thermal and mechanical equilibrium with the environment and the value of exergy is 0. So, precisely the thermomechanical contribution to exergy is 0 at equilibrium state. Now, before you do go for uh, the exergy analysis, let me discuss some terminology that we are going to use. The first one is that we are be using the word environment or surroundings. So, the thermodynamic analysis of exergy, the resulting model will involve systems plus atmosphere together and it is and this atmosphere is referred as the environment. So, the word in, in environment is nothing but a simple thermodynamic compressible systems uh, which has uniform pressure P naught and temperature T naught. Additionally, the intensive properties of the environment do not change significantly as result as a result of any process under considerations. So, in a so, in other words, we, can, we are going to say that the environment is free of free from irreversibilities. So, the exergy by considering this system and environment together is the maximum theoretical work obtainable from the overall systems and here the we will use the overall systems which means environment and the system itself. As the systems comes to the equilibrium uh, or means when the system comes to the equilibrium, it means it has passed the dead state with environment. The interaction between the system and environment also may involve many uh, certain power cycles. I mean to get the theoretical uh, work, we need some power cycles and that with uh, no irreversibilities. So, these are this with this terminology system and in environment together we are going to analyze the effect of the combined system. So, the first analysis that we are going to do is that exergy of a systems. So, in, in this case if you refer to this figure uh, the simplified form that we can have a closed systems this closed system has certain boundary and environment is at certain conditions. So, the system is interacting with surroundings and side by side this closed system is producing or uh, the integrated system involving system and surroundings produces some uh, work in the form of soft, soft work. And if you look at the entire the overall systems, the overall system has total volume that remains constant but the overall system does not encounter any uh, heat transfer. So, with this philosophy we are uh, going to discuss about the exergy of the systems. In fact, such a process normally occurs in a thermal power plants or thermal power systems that involves uh, the energy contents from the fossil fuel. And for these things, we analyze the destruction or losses of energy or what the energy that goes as a waste from these resources. Now, to calculate the exergy of the systems, we need certain uh, expressions that involves the internal energy U, kinetic energy Ke and these are the notation problem we are will be using, then potential energy Pe, volume entropy of the system uh, and the dead state situations. Dead state situation means ambient pressure P naught and temperature T naught. So, we are now considering a process in, whi in which the system and some environment are in equilibrium. So, for that thing we are going to calculate 
the energy balance equations. So, for this uh, combined system shown in this figure, the first expression that you can write is that change in the energy of the combined systems. Your C stands for the combined systems. So, as you can see that combined system there is no heat interactions, this Q C is 0. So, you have left to it delta E C is equal to minus W C and in fact, our main goal is to find out this W C. Now, delta E change in the and another way of representing this change in the uh, energy of the combined system is that. So, uh, delta E C is nothing but your E 0 which is the initial energy and that E 0 is nothing but the U 0 that is the total internal energy at the dead state and E is the any uh, energy at the any arbitrary states and this and that plus E 0 minus E plus delta E. So, now this delta uh, e, u e delta u that means, delta u e is the change in the internal energy of the environment this can be interpreted in terms of uh, the first T d s equations that is delta u e is equal to T 0 delta s c minus P 0 delta P v e. So, here e stands for the environment. Now, after getting this expression of delta e c from this now, now, if I say this is equation 1, then you see this is equation 2, then when I put equation 2 in 1, then I will get W c as this expression. That means, W c is equal to E minus E 0 plus P 0 into V minus V 0 minus T 0 into delta A c. Okay. So, the work potential or exergy of the systems we can represent in this form. Now, for the same uh, the situation, uh, I mean the, what we did in the la previous slide it was the energy balance. Now, we will be talking about the entropy balance. So, for the same figure, we can write or recall the entropy balance of the overall system delta S c is equal to Q c by t plus sigma c. Uh, so now, this Q c by t is 0 but that is because no entropy transfer uh, across the boundary of uh, boundary by heat transfer. So, we are left with the sigma c which is nothing but entropy production due to irreversibility when the system is in equilibrium with the environment and delta S c is the entropy change of the environment. So, uh, we are now going to calculate what is this delta S c. So, delta S c is nothing but your S 0 minus S plus delta S c. Delta S c is the change, I mean this is for the system and this is for the environment and that is equal to sigma c. So, from these equations we can get delta S c as S min, uh, minus S 0 plus sigma c. Uh, so, uh, if you if you recall our previous uh, energy balance equations for the same figure, we have already derived the expressions for the work transfer of the combined systems. Now, on this work transfer of the combined systems, we are now going to introduce what is this delta S c that is change in the entropy of the environment. Now, when I put it, then we are left with an expression of W c and that is equal to E minus u 0 e is the energy of the arbitrary systems and that also can be further interpreted that is nothing but your uh, e, sorry e minus u 0 plus p 0 into v minus v 0 minus t 0 into s minus s 0 minus t 0 into sigma c. So, this we derive from this. Now, let us see what is this e. e is nothing but uh, uh, combination of u plus p e plus kinetic energy that means, uh, inter, uh, internal energy, potential energy and kinetic energy. Now, when I put this expression here, finally, we land off uh, in getting the exergy of the systems which is uh, which has uh, terms like u minus e 0 plus p 0 into v minus v 0 minus t into s minus s 0 plus kinetic energy plus potential energy and the towards the end we have the term T 0 sigma c and this T sigma c is nothing but the entropy production due to irreversibility. 
So, you can see this particular expression that this is the work that we are going to extract from this uh, closed systems, but the this particular term having since sigma c is always a positive quantity this particular term kills the amount of work uh, or exergy. Okay. So, uh, if I interpret that maximum possible work then I must neglect this term that means uh, not neglect rather I will say that this irreversibility should be absent. So, when I say irreversibility is absent so you represent this W C as exergy E. So, now onwards we will be uh, using exergy term as E uh, which is the combination of internal energy between the uh, for the system and the dead state uh, and plus P 0 into V minus V 0 that means in that is uh, flow work we can say and T 0 minus into S minus S 0 plus kinetic energy and potential energy. Many a times we can we are also representing the exergy as a unit mass system. So, we call this as a specific exergy. Now, let us see that another viewpoint that means uh, we have talked about this exergy analysis in the pressure volume print temperature coordinates and uh, basically uh, if you want to put them in a graphical way what does it represent to us. So, the closed systems at a given state can attend new states by various means including work and heat interactions with surroundings. So, we can say that exergy can increase or decrease depending on the, uh, uh, the values of irreversibility of associated at any instant of time. So, the absolute exergy of the new states difference from the exergy value from the initial states. Hence, we can we have to find out the exergy change which provides the expressions for means that cancel the absolute value for certain parameters of the dead state. How you are going to do that? So, refer this particular figure that it is plotted that in a, in a three axis systems one is pressure, temperature axis and exergy axis and we have put, put the exergy contours. So, what we see that this exergy contours that means when exergy is 0 when the system is at dead state. Now, slowly with if you evolve with things that uh, that means any arbitrary plane would represent the constant exergy line and the uh, and at that and and if you put in a two dimensional form that is pressure temperature plot first plot we are getting a constant exergy contour and this and if you if, if a systems goes from 1 to 2 that means uh, from the dead state to the any arbitrary state then its exergy content increases and and when this system goes from uh, its arbitrary state to a dead state its exergy content decreases. So, this is how you view uh, the exergy temperature uh, temperature pressure surface for a gas together with the constant and exergy, uh, ex exergy contour projected on a T p coordinates. So, many a times we say that dead state that means with respect to system and the uh, system and the environment we view uh, three situations that means system has an initial state and system will have a final state. So, initial state we refer as 1, final state we refer as 2, but both this initial states is interacting with dead state and it is referred as 0. Okay. So, basically we calculate the, um, the exergy change from 1 to 0 or 2 to 0 or in other words if you just bypass this dead state 
that means if you want to find out the exergy change between 1 and 2 it is easy for us that if you quantify this E 2 minus E 1 that means final state minus initial state exergy as a function of u 2 minus u 1 plus v 0 into v 2 minus v 1 minus t 0 into s 2 minus s 1 plus kinetic energy as state 2 minus kinetic energy as state 1 uh, and the potential energy between state 2, two and 1. Okay. The next point that we are going to discuss is the closed system exergy balance. So, uh, uh, we are what uh, that point of time we have discussed at exergy of the system. Now, we have to say that like we did the energy balance from the first law and we uh, will be also looking at the exergy balance. Now, to study the exergy balance balance we need to revoke the first law and second law together. So, from this uh, again with respect to same figure the energy balance equations can be written as delta u is equal to uh, delta that is change in the internal energy plus change in the kinetic energy plus change in the potential energy that is delta E is nothing but change in the heat transfer and the change in the work transfer or delta Q minus uh, or Q minus W. So, this is how the energy balance look equation looks like. Now, if you recall the entropy balance equations, this is of the second equation that is delta S is equal to integral of 1 to 2 delta Q by T plus sigma. Now, in this equation you multiply T 0 on the both sides. So, we arrive at the second equations. Now, we have first equation and we have second equation. Now, when you subtract we get the third equations. Okay. So, in this particular equations uh, we say that um, the energy term we have entropy term we have uh, work transfer we have sorry we have work transfer we have heat transfer term and we have entropy production term. Now, if you recall the our previous analysis we did these expressions delta E in minus P 0 into delta B is equal to delta U plus delta K E plus delta P minus T 0 into delta S. So, from this these two equations we can now find out what is the value of exergy transfer. So, in other words after simplifying this expressions these are all of course, self explanatory we land up having this exergy transfer or change between for the system for the system at state 2 and 1 we call this as exergy change and it involves the exergy transfer. Now, the change happens due to the exergy transfer this exergy transfer can take place by two means one is through by heat transfer other is through work transfer. So, this is given by this uh, the um, right hand side the first expression and second expression is T 0 sigma and we call the interpret this term as exergy destructions. So, in a simplified form we write E 2 minus E 1 which is the exergy change is equal to E Q minus E W that means exergy transfer due to heat transfer and work transfer minus exergy destruction. Okay. So, this is the final basic expressions that we rewrite here. Now, here this equation has a very significant uh, uh, repercussions. First thing we are going to see here that this exergy change E 2 minus E 1 exergy trans, uh, transfer by heat E Q minus E W that is exergy transfer by work and here E D, E D is nothing but exergy destruction. So, this E D uh, can have 0 or it can be greater than 0. So, when it is 0 it means there is no irreversibility associated with the systems and when it is greater than 0 that means there is always an uh, irreversibility that is associated with the systems. That means, we say that exergy of the system drops. 
Now, from this we can rightly point out, out that uh, this is this is the options that are available for exergy destructions, but what happens to exergy change that means E 2 minus E 1 either it can be greater than 0 or it can be equal to 0 or it can be less than 0. So, there are three possibilities that exergy change is uh, uh, change uh, for any given systems. Now, we already mentioned that for an isolated system. So, when we know define this isolated system in thermodynamic sense, sense that it does not involve any heat transfer, it does not involve in the work transfer. So, E q and E w they are both 0. So, we can uh, revoke this E 2 minus E 1 as delta E isolated systems and from this equation we can interpret that is in a minus of E d that means exergy restriction of um, for the isolated systems which says that exergy of an isolated systems always decreases and this is called as decrease in the exergy principle. And this is this is an analogous terminology that we call that uh, we recall that increase in the entropy principle. So, the second law analysis of increase in the en entropy principle is interpreted as decrease in the exergy principle. And final consequence that we can write that the only processes of an isolated system that can occur are those for which exergy decreases. And uh, uh, moving further, we are now going to talk about exergy uh, balance uh, with respect to uh, with respect to what we call as, as a time or, or many times we call this as a time rate of change of exergy d e by d t. So, same expressions is evaluated in a different way, but here we write this here we say that this exergy change this is exergy transfer due to heat and due to work and this is extra exergy destruction. So, in this equation if you uh, find out what is this d e by d t then we can make this integrals that can be represented through summations for uh, exergy transfer by heat and exergy transfer by work and exergy destructions. And in a steady state situations this particular term vanishes and finally, we get the steady state exergy balance in this form and which involves that there are multiple uh, ways that a system can interact with the environment or surroundings uh, through different inlets or outlets. So, that means, there are multiple exit and entry of the things systems and for which we represent this exergy transfer due to heat transfer as E dot q j and the exergy transfer the due to work remains as it is and E d is this. Ultimately, ultimately what we are trying to say that the exergy transfer that is E q j is mainly functions of temperatures at which the, uh, the system exists and this and with respect to environment. So, why we, why we insist more on exergy with respect to uh, heat because heat is a low grade energy and complete conversion of low grade energy to heat uh, high grade energy is not possible. So, that means, if you interpret this heat in terms of work then to have maximum work we need to recall this exergy study. So, that is the entire philosophy of this uh, uh, consideration for the ec closed system exergy balance. So, now uh, we are uh, at the end of this particular lecture, we are now going to look into some numerical problems which will clarify some of our understanding uh, and the first one which we are going to discuss is the exergy study 
for an IC engine. Normally, when you say uh, internal combustion engines, we are uh, very familiar that exhaust of an engine carries lot of energy. And of course, these exhausts are associated with respect to um, lot of energy and if you want to quantify that, we have to find the work potential of that exhaust uh, um, gas energy. So, the problem that talks about that we have a uh, IC engines in which cylinder has a size of 2500 centimeter cube and um, this cylinder has some combustion products which has at pressure 7 bar and temperature 867 degrees can, um, centigrade and before the exhaust valve opens. That means, before the exhaust valve opens the combustion products is at uh, uh, 7 bar and 867 degree centigrade. Calculate the specific that at that particular instant or initial state we have to find out the specific energy of this gas, exergy of the gas. To recall this uh, study, let me draw this simple schematic diagram of an IC engine combustion chamber. So, what we have is that we have a closed system which is nothing but the engine cylinder and this is nothing but the boundary this is the combustion products contents and we have the pistons on the top somewhere we have we can say there is an exhaust valve just before the exhaust of the engine the uh, conditions were 7 bar 867 degree centigrade. So, we need to calculate the specific exergy for this gas. So, we can recall this expression for specific exergy as E is equal to U minus U 0 plus P 0 into V minus V 0 minus T 0 into S minus S 0. So, prior to this let me recall this ambient condition. So, since no data is given, so I can say that ambient conditions can be recalled as P 0 is 1 bar or 1.013 bar and T naught is 300 Kelvin. So, we have two situations to calculate all these numbers the we have to refer the data table. This data table is to be referred for the uh, temperatures T at temperature T at 867 degree centigrade and temperature at 300 Kelvin. So, sorry uh, so, 867 degree centigrade which means that it is, so I will write it as 887. So, 887 degree centigrade which is equivalent to temperature at 1160 Kelvin. So, referring to this data table, 
we are going to find out u is equal to 897.91 kilojoule per kg and uh, your entropy is equal to 3.14 kilojoule per kg kelvin so this is taken at t is equal to 1160 kelvin this data table can be referred in any thermodynamics books now again at t is equal to 300 kelvin we can find out u is equal to 214.07 kilojoule per kg s is equal to uh, we will say s0 u0 and s0 and t0 and uh, s0 would be um, 1.702 kilojoule per kg kelvin now let us evaluate one by one term so data given so we know u minus c0 this number will be 683.0 84 kilojoule per kg then s minus s0 expression we can recall that is entropy of the arbitrary system and the dead state that is nothing but s0 at temperature arbitrary temperature minus entropy production at the temperature t naught minus there is another term r bar by m into ln p by p0 where your r bar is universal gas constant which is 8.314 kilojoule per kg kelvin m is the molecular weight and this molecular weight we can uh, directly take an assumption that uh, they are almost analogous to air we can say 28.97 now considering this and putting this number we have all this number s0t s0t and s then this s minus s0 will get 0.8836 kilojoule per kg kelvin then next term we can find out p into v minus v0 so before you go for this let us recall what is v from the ideal gas equation of state we can write v in as a pv is equal to rt and then we can find out v is equal to P by V is equal to R by A M into T by P. Now putting this, we can write as R by M, R bar by M into P zero T by P minus T zero. So here we know all the number. So this becomes 8.314 by 28.97 p0 is 1.013 into t is 1160 divided by uh, p p is your 7 bar minus 300 so this number is a negative quantity minus 37.9 kilojoule per kg okay so once we have this this and this then you can find out e is equal to 683.84 minus 37.9 minus t0 is 300 into 0.8836 so we can find out specific exergy e as 
is 381 kilojoule per kg which means that the exhaust gas is as substantial amount of exergy which is 381 kilojoule per kg now in the similar line we are now going to pro solve the second problem which is mainly on a uh, on the uh, exergy balance for the closed system so what the problem talks about is that in many industrial situations uh, uh, the heat that generated in a furnace has to be dissipated to the there is a heat generated in a furnace and we ensure that heat should not come out so that uh, that means we provide sufficient insulation that heat should not come out and and you ha we have some arbitrary ambient conditions which is atmospheric conditions so this is what we do that uh, in a furnace we expect that energy should not come out but in uh, to do that we require the wall design for the furnace now here we have to do some kind of exergy auditing which says that we must uh, we must take into account the wall design such a way there will be the minimal transfer of loss or energy loss to the surroundings so with this philosophy or we can say auditing of the exergy and we are and this uh, this exergy is transfer is mainly due to heat transfer because the furnace is normally is at very high temperatures so the problem statement that gives here that wall of an industrial drying oven is construct constructed by sandwiching 60 mm of thick insulation with thermal conductivity of 0.05 watt per meter kelvin between the thin metal sheets at steady state the inner metal sheet is at 570 kelvin outer sheet is at 305 kelvin the temperature varies linearly through the wall to the surroundings and the surrounding is at uh, uh, surroundings at 295 kelvin we need to determine the rate of heat transfer through the wall rate of exergy transfer accompanying the heat transfer at the inner wall and the outer wall then exergy destruction within the wall so a schematic environment that i will be looking at that it's nothing but our emphasis should be focused on a wall or you can say there may be furnace or oven this furnace and oven has wall this wall is insulated and its thickness is 0.06 meter inner wall of this oven is we can say t1 570 outer uh, kelvin and outer wall of this is let's say t2 this is at 305 kelvin and ambient that is surroundings t not is 295 kelvin now across this wall the the temperature drops linearly that is what it is given temperature varies linearly through the wall okay and what other param and and in this case what you can say the flow of heat you can say q dot in and this is q dot out that is for inner wall and the for the outer wall so i say this is inner and this is outer so the first expression that we are going to find out what is the rate of heat transfer through the wall so to find the rate of heat transfer through the wall we recall that we have to find q dot by a that means we let's say heat flux and we have to recall this as for from the fourier law 
Fourier law of heat transfer that is nothing but minus k into T 1 minus T 2 sorry in this case T 2 minus T 1 by L. So, we know T 2. So, k is given 0 0.05 into 10 to the power minus 3. So, there is a negative sign. So, T 2 is 305 minus 570 divided by thickness 0 0.06. So, this number is 0 0.2 kilowatt per meter square. So, the first answer we get that rate of heat transfer through the wall is this. Second answer rate of exergy transfer accompanying heat transfers. So, you have to recall the exergy transfer due to heat transfer we can say Q E dot Q by 1 by A. So, here 1 stands for inner wall. So, it is nothing but 1 minus T 0 by T 1 into Q dot by A. So, this is for inner wall. So, we know that the inner wall is at 570 Kelvin. So, we can say E q 1 by A is equal to 1 minus T 0 is 295 by 570 into 0 0.2. So, we say E dot q 1 by A is equal to approximately it is 0 0.1 kilowatt per meter square. Then this is accompanying by heat transfer at the inner wall and for the outer wall we can write E dot Q 2 by A. In this expression we have to write instead of T 1 we are going to write T 2 that is T 1 minus 295 by T 2 is 305 into Q dot A is 0 0.2. So, this number is 0 0.01 kilowatt per meter square. So, we, we got the second answer and third answer which extra G destructions. So, we say E dot Q by A that means combinedly one between 1 and 2 we, we can write 0 0.1 minus 0 0.01. So, exergy destruction is 0 0.09 kilowatt per meter square. So, this says that we have a substantial amount of exergy destruction and that exergy destruction is may be quite sometimes it is unavoidable and this extra destruction needs to be minimized. So, this can be minimized by improving the thermal conductivity of the insulation materials. So, these two problems gives us some glimpses that how extra destruction is a significant parameter in many industrial processes. So, with this I will conclude and thank you for your attention.